Hi, I'm Glenn Darcy, Vice President of Product Management for Arturia. This video is going to dig into the sampling and sample editing of our new CMIV software. The CMI was known for its crunchy, digital, 8-bit, low sample rate sound. If you're looking for a clean sample player, this is not it. This will impart a sound on your samples for sure. So let's start by opening a drum sample into a voice. Editing samples is very simple on CMI. Let's just play this drum loop. In the sample overview page, we're going to make sure that we're in the 2D view. Now we can start to trim the start, either by using the slider in the evolution section, or by just grabbing the arrow in the upper part of the screen. Similarly, you can adjust the endpoints as well as the loop start and the loop end. If we zoom into the waveform, and we go to move the start point. You can see that it snaps to these different blocks. Well, the original CMI, it would only edit in 128 sample blocks. Now we have made it where if you hold the shift key down, you can then do much more exact editing. But it really was designed for editing via the blocks, not sample by sample. This was another feature of the CMI. This is why so many of those classic songs had sounds with audible clicks and loops. It's part of the sound. Now you'll notice normally it's going to play the loop forward by clicking the back forth loop down here. It's going to play it backwards and forwards. The sample edit page allows for more options in the sound. We modeled the input and output circuits of a CMI 2X. While the original CMI was 8-bit, we allowed you to choose anything from 1-bit up to 16 bits. But for that authentic sound, set it to 8 bits. You can adjust the gain as well. This is going to simulate driving the input stages harder. It'll add a really nice crunch to your drums. The CMI had a sample rate from about 2 kHz to 30 kHz. We've extended the sample rate all the way up to 44.1, but if you're looking for that authentic sound, don't go above 30 kHz. Now one thing to remember is an original CMI had about 2 seconds of sampling, less actually, at 30 kHz. So most of the things that you heard on those original albums were people using lower sample rates to increase their recording time. If we zoom all the way into the waveform and we adjust the sample rate, you're going to see that the waveform itself starts to change as we adjust the rate down. You'll see some of the high end ends up coming out of that waveform. And you can hear it as well. Get a little sample rate distortion, push it up on the gain. and you get some ugly, gnarly, harsh, brash, and beautiful drum sounds. The CMI also had input filters that would allow you to tailor the sound on the way in sampling it. You can hear the result of these. If we cut out the lows, The original CMI had analog low pass and high pass filters on the input. We've simulated the circuits here, and you can see as I'm adjusting them that it's changing the sound.
These are another tool in just sculpting your sound. The convert to synthesis function is a type of resynthesis where it looks at the sound file and tries to convert it into sine waves with envelopes. It works okay doing this on a fixed pitch sound, and it works horribly on sounds where the pitch changes. Let me give you an example of this. So we've got this drum sound, and let's analyze it. Because there's not really any pitched content in a drum loop, this is what you get. Now, I personally like it. Take it down a couple octaves, add some big reverb to it, and you got instant backgrounds for a sci-fi film. So while it doesn't do what you think it might do, it does do something kind of cool. Be sure to look for the next video where we'll get more in depth in the time synthesis.